there! Welcome to Grey Bush Knits Podcast, Episode 1. Welcome to the Grey Bush Knits podcast. My name is Hannah and I live in northern Arizona with my husband, our two dogs, two cats, and our pot belly pig. Um, I have been knitting for two years consistently and had actually learned when I was a teenager but took some time off when it wasn't something that I was wanting to knit any more scarves or mittens which at the time was all that I was working on. Now I'm into apparel and um, especially sweaters and cardigans, but I am starting to work on some different items like shawls or some um, felted items, which I'm really excited to get working on. Um, I also enjoy quilting, gardening, and um, I also do a lot of work with sourdough and actually sell at our local farmer's market here in town. So I have a lot going on. I also work a full-time job at a veterinary clinic. I've done that for about 20 years now total, and I absolutely love it. But I thought I would come on here. I've recently been inspired by quite a few different um, podcasts that are other women that have not been knitting for an incredibly long time, and it just really empowered me and made me realize that Yes, we're all learning and yes, we're all going through different stages of that learning process. And I was really excited to share my progress as well as um, other things that I'm working on. So that's what this podcast is going to be is primarily my knitting. However, I will include things um, out in the garden or if I'm working on a quilt project, I may show that. I don't quilt very often, um, but I am due to give my niece her baby blanket, which I did not present when she was born almost a year ago. So hopefully by her first birthday, I'll have that done. Um, I also may end up showing bits and pieces in the summertime as it's getting into farmer's market season. I may have more, um, more videos or I may share a little bit more on the sourdough process but I'm just kind of leaving this up in the air. I really enjoy um, dabbling in different things. I feel like as a creative person, we all like to um, try things out, maybe go to something different for a little while, maybe come back around, maybe not. Um, but that's one of the things that I absolutely love is trying out different things and um, kind of experiencing and trying to figure out a better option and learning along the way. So I just wanted to say hello and welcome and I'm so happy that you're here. I would love to have you stick around just because I don't want to forget later. If you do enjoy this video, please like and subscribe, hit that bell, do all the things that YouTube likes because I would love, love, love to have you stick around. Um, so first of all, we'll just jump right into what I'm wearing. And that is my um, fall favorite sweater. This was um, designed by Megan Ryan. And um, I had seen on Ravelry, there was someone, um, her name was Dear Emma Ray. And she had one in a very similar um, color scheme. And I absolutely loved it and knew I had to make it. Um, I can't remember exactly what yarn she used, but it was way out of my budget and I decided to um, purchase some, um, well, I got Knit Picks Alpaca Blend. Um, it's an upcycle, and at the time, I didn't realize actually until I was kind of making my notes for this video, I thought it was 100% alpaca. It's not. It's equal parts alpaca, wool, and acrylic, and let me tell you, it's itchy. It drives me nuts. Um, <laughs> But I have only worn it this one. Well, this is the second time I've worn it. 
but um, I just finished it not too long ago. Um, I blocked it and it softened up a lot. So I'm hoping that with time it will get better. Um, so fingers crossed on that one. Um, the colors that I used, um, so there is a red color that's garnet. And then I've got Fawn. Um, the primary color was Buckeye. And then um, it's Topaz for the leaves and then this collar portion. I do absolutely love this sweater. I love the fit of it. Um, I was really nervous that it was gonna be too fitting um, because I'm somebody that I always try to make it in my size, but then it ends up being way too tight or um, it's way too baggy in, in my waist and I don't like it. So this one, I really tried to stick to the pattern. I really tried to just go with it. And the only modification I actually made was on the sleeves. Um, the sleeves had a continuous de decrease and I wanted a little bit more room. Um, like I said, I work in a vet clinic and I have to lift 50 to 70 pound dogs from the ground onto the exam room table pretty frequently. So, and especially in the summertime when I'm doing a lot of gardening, I can build up a little bit of muscle. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna have a shirt that was not gonna fit comfortably, um, even in the fall when I'm just kind of coming out of that garden mode. <laughs> um, so this one, I absolutely love it. Um, the As far as things that I would change, I would probably say the yarn, um, maybe even the collar. I, It's really tough because I like how high this collar is. I love the line that it, it has to this um, sweater. However, it, because I think it's a combination of the collar and the yarn, it itches right there where it lays. And it, it could also be my um, bind on, uh, like as far as when I was starting my sweater, I kind of wonder if I would have used a different technique if, or if I would have done like a higher collar and then folded it or something along those lines, if it would have been better. But if I leave it alone and I don't think about it, I'm fine. <laughs> so um, I've, I've worn this actually for a couple hours now um, and I was also anticipating it being incredibly hot, but it's not. I think that's that combination with the um, acrylic and the wool. So I'm very happy. Um, there is, let's see if I can get in here and show you. So there is just a little bit of fluff there, not too much. I do still have to weave in the ends on my um, on my sleeves, but I don't care. Um, I sometimes, I, well, let me rephrase this. So on my sweaters, I will obviously put that back in. I will um, weave that in because I don't want it to get caught on something. However, when I make shawls or things like that, I love to leave the ends. Um, I've heard that it's actually Navajo tradition to leave them so that that's where the bad spirits can escape. And I find that really endearing. So um, it's going to be my excuse, but I love being able to see when you look at an item that it's been handmade. I don't, I mean, I wore this out and, you know, I'm sure that people would love my sweater, but they would never think that I would have made it because, you know, who would make a sweater? <laughs> um, the other thing that I just want to talk about that I would change on this. So this is my third yoke sweater with color work and um, that that is for me. I had made a fourth one um, and that one I gave to my mom, but um, I'm learning that I do not like this structure. So I'm getting away from color work yoke um, in the round kind of sweaters. I have a Reglan sweater that we'll talk about here in a little bit. So I'm just kind of trying to um, experiment with different um, structures and see if they fit me better um, or if, if I just, I don't know, if I like them. Um, some sweaters that are this round um, yoke structure. As soon as I lift it up, all of this just bunches up and it drives me inc insane. Um, this one thankfully hasn't been doing that. I've been kind of trying it out. Oh, there. It's kind of doing it a little bit. You can see. So it's a, overall though, it's not too bad. I really have to get going to have it do that. So overall, I'm really, really happy. 
every time I wear it, I'm happier than um, I was or every time I tried it on as I was knitting it. So I'm very, very happy about that. Um, this sweater, just to kind of give you an idea, took me over two months to complete. The reason for that is um, I flew through all of this and I was working on this back in October. Um, I flew through all of this and then I started to go in the round and I just kind of petered out and I got tired of stocking at stitch. So I took some time off of it and when I ended up coming back around, um, I picked up the sleeve and I did one sleeve and then that really got me going and I was like, oh, that's so easy. I'm going to go ahead and finish the body. So I finished the body to the length that I wanted. Great. Then it went on hold again for like three weeks at least. And then I finally finished the second sleeve. So, um, I mean, as far as if I wouldn't have taken that time on hold, I probably could have finished this much quicker. However, um, stocking it brown, um, I mean, I say that in a way like I wasn't enjoying it. I did really enjoy it, but there was no like color variation compared to really having to pay attention up here. And then it got to just knit and I just got bored. So I'm really happy it's done. I'm really happy to move on to something different. Um, and that kind of leads me into my, um, my first finished object other than this. So this I actually finished um, well, I finished it right before New Year's Eve, um, 2024, uh, 23. <laughs> um, so my goal was I had, um, this project and a shawl that I was working on through December. And my goal was to finish them and have, cl you know, clear needles by the new year. Um, so I was able to do that. I'm so glad that I did. Just felt like it was a bit of a fresh start. There was one item that I brought with me into the new year, but it's just kind of um, uh, something that I'm kind of playing around with. I'm not super worried about it. It's just kind of practice for me. Um, but talking about this shawl, so this is the Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Mowry. And this I knit in Malabrigo Rios. Um, and the color combination that I made it in was um, Glitter, Indicita, VAA, Capricorn, Nebula, um, excuse me, Niebla, and Fresco Iseco. And I actually, this is my second night shift shawl. Um, my first one I made last year in January. My husband had actually purchased some of the yarn um, that was recommended and I think it was actually even the same colors as Andrea's sample. Um, he had bought the, that for me for Christmas last year so I made it. My birthday is the end of January so it was kind of my birthday gift to myself. And I love that shawl so much. I wear it all the time. Um, I love the color variation in it but I wanted something that was more green, brown, um, kind of natural tones and so that's why I made this one. Um, so the way that I normally wear this. Let me see if I can do this without being a complete mess. <laughs> you never put these on and look, um, you know, very, very smart while you're doing it. It always just goes everywhere. So this is how I normally wear it. And then I do have a pin that I will also kind of tack in here normally so that when I keep the pin in it, I could just pull it over my head. I don't have to do that big mess every time, but this is how I wear it. And you can see, I don't put my ends in. I love that look. Um, so here's that. Just another close up. Um, I, I'm just so happy. So, so happy with the shawl. And um, this took me about 14 days to make. Um, this was something I was so excited to do. I just booked it out and um, then even when I was working on it, I kept thinking to myself if I wanted to make it the exact same length, if I wanted to make it a little bit longer, and I had so much yarn that I decided to make it longer. So the original shawl was supposed to end, I think, here, here or here. And so I went a little bit further, um, and it just added 
<laughs> it's pretty big. So there we go. You can see it added a little bit extra there as well. Um, but what I ended up with on each of those balls of yarn, I could make another identical shawl. Um, contemplated that. Um, my mom keeps telling me that I could make her one. This shawl was amazing. I absolutely, absolutely would recommend this pattern to everybody. The it makes you feel like you're doing something really difficult, but it's not. Um, the you work with one color at a time. It's all um, basic stitches, nothing crazy. Even the um, tubular bind, or yeah, the tubular. Um, oh, I don't know the terminology very well. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to make notes because. My memory just isn't great and so I have to have notes for these types of things but it's got a great tubular edge right here and I love the way it looks um, and it's so easy and it looks so clean um, and if this is what I was saying if I had a, this type of edging on this sweater I feel like it would have been great but this is 100% merino it blocked out and grew a little bit not as much as my other shawl did um, but it is so soft that, I mean, I could bundle this up and use it for a pillow. Like, it's so amazing. So, highly recommend the Night Shift Shawl by Andrea Maori. Um, then the, um, other than that, I don't have anything else that I finished up recently. Um, like I said, just two really big projects. So, um, what I'm working on right now, there's two items. So the first, like I said, that was kind of my test project is a pair of Sunday socks. These I am knitting on two, um, two cable needles. And, um, this is a new technique for me. Um, I don't like knitting socks. I cannot see the fingering weight yarn very well. And I've got 2020 vision, so I, it just starts to blur together for me. So I'm knitting these, they're a DK weight, and this is just some um, acrylic yarn that I picked up at, I believe it was at Hobby Lobby. Um, I'll link everything down in the description as far as um, the yarn, the Ravelry pages, all of that. But um, this, I do really love the um, striping. It did take me a little bit to get the colors, um, to match because where the yarn was at, they were not at all close to each other. Um, but then once I got that taken care of, it was super, super quick and easy. Um, I do plan on making some socks with this pattern, which I'll show you the yarn that I have for that in a little bit. Um, so that's why these are kind of my tester to see how, um, kind of test it out before I'm using the other yarn. Um, this I am just keeping, I've got this little bow baton bag. I'm a humongous Harry Potter fan. Um, if you can see in the background, I've just got like a ton of Harry Potter decor in this room. Um, so I love to keep that in my bow baton bag. And then second one, I've got this big old canvas bag. Um, it was one that I got from Hobby Lobby and then I just dyed it with some writ dye. But um, in here I have, um, so this is my sweater number nine by uh, My Favorite Things Knitwear. And this is the raglan that I was referring to a little bit ago. Um, so first I wanna show you, hee hee hee. So the two yarns that I'm using. So this is a hand dyed, um, I dyed this yarn um, two years ago, maybe, maybe it was last fall. And it's got a lot of that petroleum blue, some gray. There are flecks of kind of a lime green, some flat flecks of natural and, um, just some really beautiful green tones in there. And then I'm paired this with the, um, silk mohair in deep petroleum from, um, knitting for olive. And this is the first time that I'm using mohair. Uh, I was really nervous because I wasn't sure how I was going to respond to the mohair. Um, I've heard kind of mixed 
um, reviews from people. So um, I'm very happy that <laughs> it's not having any negative effects on me. So with this in mind, this is the yarn combination and my sweater is here. Don't mind this. My plan, uh, well, I'll just, I'll go into that in a minute. So here is my <laughs> sweater number nine. This I started on New Year's Eve, so it's been five days and I am the significant of way into the body. I think I have another six or eight centimeters to go on the body before I start the ribbing. So I'm very, very excited. Um, this, as far as the main section of the body, so I really love this color and variation. I really love having the um, uh, silk mohair in there. The one thing that I do want to talk about is this awesome stripe. Um, the good news is when I tried this on, I, I noticed my, cause I was using one ball of yarn, which I know I shouldn't have done, but I was lazy. So I know this, that's why this happened. Um, when I tried this on, um, I think I was just right about here and i already, <clears throat> excuse me, already I felt like this was too high. It was just too much too, too much. And then the more times that I've tried it on, making sure that the fit was as oversized as I wanted it, the more I decided that I'm going to be doing this and having more of a short, all, um, like wide collar, and you won't be able to really tell so bad when it's like that. So that's kind of my plan. I'm really not too worried about it. I have contemplated on ripping that out but it's not going to be bad enough for me. I don't think to warrant taking all that out and redoing it. Um, it's just kind of one of those things where hmm, <laughs> I feel like even if I were to switch yarns, you know, every couple rows, like you should when you have a variegated yarn, I would still see some variation of this. And so that's why I just really wasn't worried. Um, once I got down into the body, I think it was about here. And that's when I actually started um, to mess with two balls of yarn um, at a time because I wanted to get through the raglan increases, get through all of that, make sure that I wasn't getting myself mixed up. And then I went ahead and um, added that on. There's not much of a variation. I'll just show you this way. So there's not really much of a variation in the yarn balls. Um, I kind of see a line here in the camera, but I don't see it in person. So just to kind of give you an idea, but either way, I'm incredibly happy with how this is going so far. I love the fit of it. Um, it is going really fast and kind of mindless. Um, I love the gauge on it. It's a bulky weight with the um, mohair. So I just fly through it and it's super soft as I'm working on it. So that's a plus. Um, I did add the sleeves. So instead of putting them on like scrap or on cording, I put them on <laughs> one of my 16 inch cable needles and then I just put the stoppers on there so I can try it on. And then whenever I go to do my sleeves, I'm gonna do two sleeves at a time. And so I've already got these ready to go pretty much. So that'll be really quick and easy for me. This project, um, I, like I said, I would highly, highly recommend. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. So as soon as we I get done filming today, I'm going to place a stitch marker I have this one right now for my beginning of round, but I'm going to place a stitch marker and then we can see how far I am um, by next week. Um, don't be surprised if it's done, or at least if the body's done. I don't know if I'll have both the sleeves done, but we'll see. Um, so I'm really, really excited with how that's going. This is a sweater. When I made the yarn, I was very particular about the project I wanted to make with it. So I'm really excited that it's going so well and that I'm happy with it. Um, it's very scary to use your own hand dyed yarn in a project. Um, at least it is for me. So, um, anyway, 
those are both of my projects that I'm working on right now. Um, I do have a couple projects that are not knitting, but I'll cover all of that later on in case you're only here for the knitting, um, which is fine too. So as far as my plans, um, I have a few things that are in the works. What I've done this year, um, in years past, I make a huge list on Ravelry of everything that I would like to make for the entire year. And I only get done two or three things because I get busy and I don't get to anything and I get overwhelmed. Um, so I decided this year I'm going to try it a little bit differently. I have decided that I would like to focus on quarterly knitting. So in the first three months of the year, three, four months, I will um, have a, a small list of things that I would like to focus on. Um, and I would love to have a sweater and a cardigan and a pair of socks um, for this quarter. Um, and if I can get in a few other knits, that would be amazing. I do have plans and I have ordered some things um, to kind of make that happen. Um, the first item that I had on my list was that sweater. Um, so my sweater number nine is the number one item on my list. Um, secondly is the Core Shaven um, cardigan by Tanya Hodney. Um, this cardigan is something that I have seen from other YouTubers and um, kind of I've been wanting texture. Rather than color work, I've been wanting texture. I've been trying to find just the right sweaters. I have not tried cabling yet, so that is something on my list for this year as well. However, um, when I came across this um, kind of basket weave pattern, I was very intrigued. Um, I, I would love to find something that would be really striking and beautiful and some amazing texture um, that would just kind of be baby steps to get to the cable work because that is incredibly intimidating for me. Um, the next item on my list is the Lulu slipover. So this is, pattern is by Petite Knits. This is one that my mom actually picked out as being her first um, knitted garment that she wants to make. I say that. Um, she's knit scarves, mittens, things like that, but never like a t-shirt or a sweater or anything like that. So this is a great stepping stone and I've decided that I'm going to make one as well and that way if there's any sort of questions or issues that she's having along the way then I know exactly what she's talking about and I can help her through that. So um, I was going to order yarn to make one but I'm not 100% excuse me percent sure how much I'm going to wear this slipover. I have a couple dresses that I know I could wear it with and I know I, I wear long sleeve t-shirts all through the fall and the winter. Um, it does not get super cold here in northern Arizona. So um, I went stash diving and I found, um, so I've got this hobby yarn. Whoop, there we go. So this is a sock wool um, 75% wool, 25% nylon, um, and it is a, um, DK weight, um, in this really pretty kind of teal color. You see, there we go. Um, and I thought this would be a good option. So the, um, I kept, I kept thinking about going and just purchasing some acrylic. I thought about splurging on the wool, but I thought this would be a good option because it is primarily wool. I know it's a sock yarn. Um, I know I could make socks with this and I know I probably will wish that I would have made socks with this, but, um, I'm really excited to make this pattern with my mom. And I think that this is the perfect yarn to do that with. The dresses that I have will also match this yarn really, really well. So I think this is going to be a great option. So I'm really, really excited to get going on that. Um, the socks that I would like to make I'm just really focusing on these um, kind of tester Sunday socks that I'm working on as being my first quarter socks. Um, and if I like them, I do have another um, uh, colorway, the same yarn, but a different colorway. It's more of 
teals white and brown um, that I may make an, another pair in um, but my mother-in-law has asked for a pair of socks and so um, and she's she's had socks made for her before and I know that they were fingering weight and wool socks and you know just really nice by somebody with much more sock knitting experience than I so I'm trying to find that happy medium and make her a really comfy cozy pair of socks so that I'm hoping to also have done in this quarter um, some additional things that I would love to get to if I have time um, so the first one is the Tulsa's tea by Rebecca Klo. That pattern is um, just something, excuse me, that I have been drawn to for quite a while. And I finally just purchased the darn thing and decided I was gonna work on it at some point. And um, here I can wear, I can start wearing t-shirts pretty early. So I thought this quarter would be really good to start working on them. So I have two yarns that I am looking to make my first one in. Um, these are both Barocco Comfort. The um, first one, let me see if it's got the color on here, 97.82. So here is that. It's looking really orange, but it's more of kind of like a, a pinkish orange color. Um, I'm trying to think of something that would match that but um i do really really love the color of this and i think it would be a great um summertime um vibrant color to wear so i'm i am really excited um i have i think i have three or four balls of this yarn so i think it'll be enough to make myself a tulsa's tea um just a really basic white one i may end up adding some sort of lace work across the top um I haven't done lace work before so I don't know what I'm doing there but we'll see um so that's kind of the idea with this one and then I have um this second color 9756 and this is just a really beautiful dark blue I did also order a sparkly yarn to go with it based on one of her podcasts that I watched recently she had a black version um she done, I think, in a fingering weight with this sparkle yarn, and it was so gorgeous that I, that's what made me go buy the pattern and go buy that yarn because I need to have one for myself. Um, I did find that glitter yarn in kind of a navy blue hue, so I'm really excited that I already have this yarn in my stash and can use it because that's what I'm trying to do is kind of work down the. Um, I'm not going to tell you how many boxes that I have of yarn in my closet. Um, this yarn is 50% nylon and 50% acrylic. So this will be good in the summertime. I know it's not the perfect um, option, but like I said, it's what I have in my stash. <laughs> um, the next item is a Louvre sweater and this is by Petite Knits. This is a pattern that my mom and I found that we both love and we both want. So Black Friday we ordered the yarn. She ordered a dark gray and I ordered a very light gray. There we go. And these are Cascade Eco Merino and um, I am really excited to use this yarn. I love Cascade yarns. So I'm really hoping that this one will soften up just as much as my shawl has. Um, and this I'm really, really excited about. Um, the one thing that I will say is I'm not sure how much, once I, once I got this in, I'm not sure how much I love the color against my skin tone. So that is one thing that I am contemplating on and I figure I will make my mom's version of the sweater first and take my time to decide if I want to still make that pattern for me or if I want to add something to this. Um, also, it's undyed, so if I absolutely decide this color, I haven't swatched it yet, but if I absolutely decide that this color isn't gonna work, then I'm not against dyeing it. I will do that if I have to because, you know, I got it on a really good deal for Black Friday. The last item, if I get time, 
is going to be a classic ribbed hat by Pearl Soho. Again, I would probably use the same Barocco Comfort yarn. I have a, well, I made a version for my father-in-law, not Christmas this, this past Christmas, but the year before in 2022. And I loved that hat so incredibly much that I love the fabric on it. I loved the fit of it. I need to make one for myself. So I'm trying to decide if I want to make it in one of those two colors that I showed you. Um, I do have some black in the closet as well that I could use for it, um, as well as some scraps of gray as well as kind of a burgundy color. So, well, I think it's beetroot is the actual color of it or if I want to order some yarn, but I'm really trying not to. So um, we'll see, but that is definitely something that I would love to have. Um, yeah, so that's everything as far as my um, knitting projects that I would like to work on. Um, I will just cover two items. One of them is kind of knitting related. So I would like to make some project bags um, for those sock projects that I wanna make. Um, so I picked up, uh, goodness, this had to be a couple years ago. I had picked up some um, fabric from Joann's here in, not that far from me. And I thought these would be amazing to make some project bags with. Um, so there's that one obviously. And then you could tell I, I must've picked these all up at Christmas time last year because that's what they are primarily is Christmas. This one's got gingerbreads. It's kind of like a pink and it's kind of sage green. I love that color combination. Um, this one has some gnomes and is more garden themed, which is my jam. You can see those. So I'm really excited. I would love to make some in various sizes. I love the strawberries. It's adorable. And then um, be able to have those maybe use them for gifts next year. That is something that I'm already thinking of. Um, I know as knitters, we find people that are gift knit worthy and we kill ourselves the last month or two um, before Christmas to get all these projects done. And that's one thing that I don't wanna do. I want to give knitted gifts. That's what I did primarily last year was knitted gifts for every single family member in my immediate family and it was a lot of work. It was incredibly rewarding. I was so happy. It was probably, um, I felt like it was, the, it was the best gifts that I have given to anybody in a long time. So I was really excited about that, but I decided I'm gonna start that in January. I loved being able to give those knitted gifts to everybody last year. And so this year, I'm just gonna start early and make sure that, um, I'm not killing myself at the very last minute. So the last project, the, oh, excuse me. <clears throat> the last one that I kind of referenced earlier is the quilt for my niece. And this is what she looks like right now. She is not done. Um, I have a, I think it's about a third to a half of the um of the stitching done and so i still have a little bit left to do and then i do need to finish the edge um i leave all of this out while i'm trying to get everything else done in case anything shifts but um i absolutely love the fabric that i picked out for this i love the color pattern i the color pattern <laughs> i love the pattern um and i love that it's girly without being pink and um, frilly because that's that's not my sister's vibe and I appreciate that. So, um, but I will tell you, these colors right here were in my bedroom when I was in middle school and high school. And so this right here is what I'm about. <laughs> I'm so excited to be working on that. Um, I have taken a lot of time off of it because I just wasn't in the mood to quilt. Um, when you're working on a, a good sized blanket on a regular sewing machine, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of fighting with my sewing machine. It will create a lot of bird's nests 
when it gets mad at the layers and I have to rip a bunch of stuff out and so it's a definite labor of love right now but um, thankfully I've had my sewing machine long enough I know what makes it work and what doesn't and so I just have to get through it. As far as any other plans um, for the channel or anything else going on, so I would really like to post videos weekly, um, kind of keep you posted on what I'm working on, how I'm processing through some of the issues or maybe not issues on my projects. Um, I would also um, probably end up including some videos of gardening, um, or even, like I said before, my sourdough, things like that that I'm working on. I'd love to share that, um, if you're, especially if you're interested in it. Um, I do a lot of reading, but I probably won't share any of that because that tends to be audio, audio books while I am out gardening. Um, that's one of my favorite ways to listen to books is while I'm doing something like that where I don't really need to focus on the weeds that I'm pulling. I can just have Adam while I'm listening to Harry Potter or whatever it is that I'm currently reading. Um, but other than that, um, I would absolutely love it if you would stick around. Um, I would really love to hear any of your comments. If you have experience using any of these yarns, um, especially the Eco Merino, since this is going to be the first time that I'm going to be trying that yarn out. I would love to hear any kind of feedback that you might have. Um, also, if you have any helpful suggestions with sock knitting or um, some of those like beginner patterns, I am going to try to make some shorty socks with some different colors. That's something I would really love to do. Um, and then slowly work my way down in gauge, um, excuse me, in the weight of the yarn so that I can, I would really love to get to fingering weight. There are some beautiful patterns out there available and I would really love to be able to work on some of those. But like I said, I need to get my eyes to focus. So I'm gonna try to work on that. But um, I would really love to hear from you, hear what you're working on. Um, and um, I will hopefully see you next week. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.